Great. Hello and welcome to tonight's Sewer Authority meeting. Today is Thursday, May 21st, 2020. Today, if you'd like to dial in to call about a question that you have about something that you see on the agenda, you can call the number 646-558-8656 and enter meeting ID 820-1438. Nine zero eight seven, and then the pound sign. Um, please note that when you're watching online, there's a slight delay. So call early on an item if you have a, a question about it. Thank you very much. And I look forward to a great meeting. Phil, can you take it over? Okay. Good to see everybody here. It is now 714. I'm going to call the Lower Makefield Township Township Sewer Authority uh meeting to be opened and if we um could can we have a roll call we'll start with greg and just go around the screen you're on mute greg greg hocklebridge public works director phil tyler chairman fred fred ebert authority engineer barbara Mark. Township solicitor. Uh, Joe. Joe Lingle, supervisor board member. Kurt. Ferguson, township manager. Scott. Scott Ferrante, vice chair, and fashionably late. Sorry, guys. Dan. Uh, Dan Grenier, supervisor liaison. And Scott Phillips. Scott Phillips. Sewer uh, Authority member. Okay. Uh, if we could, we haven't met since January. So if we could um, get approval of the minutes from the January 23rd meeting to 20, 2020. Do I have a motion to uh, accept those minutes? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. All in favor? With an aye. You need a second. Aye. Oh, a second. I'm sorry. It's been a long time. Can I get a second? I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? With, with an aye, everybody? Aye. Raise your hand. aye. Okay. Good enough. Okay. Also, to, this is open to the public if they wanted uh, any, put their comments or ask questions. So, Anybody's listening to this meeting can do so. So we'll start with Fred for the capital projects update. I mean, you got 15 minutes. <laughs> Thank you guys. Um, there are five contracts that we're going to discuss tonight. Um, so there is, um, and I believe they were all distributed. So if we can start the share screen with contract uh, SWR 20-1. This is the sanitary sewer liner. Um, the purpose of this contract, um, which is already included in the 2020 um, capital budget, is to uh, install a permanent liner and repair to uh, sanitary sewer mains in both the Neshaminy or Bucks County service area, as well as the Morrisville service area. The goal is to provide a permanent repair um, by putting a cured in place epoxy liner from manhole to manhole, eliminating all of the joints that we have in here. Um, in order to decide where to, where to install these mains, we have gone out and televised uh, areas of high flows, also reviewed the flow records. Um, and in order to do that, the areas that we identified in the on the Chamonix interceptor is the area upstream of the um, Derbyshire meter pit. This is where we had an overflow last year. It was primarily caused by um, roots, but more importantly, we have a bypass sewer there because we routinely exceed the capacity of that pipe. Um, so that was the area that we chose in the Bucks County area. And this would also work is also required 
by the corrective action plan. Um, we're actually jumping down out, out of our normal area because our, our flow metering did not indicate in video any major needs, whereas this was very clearly a need. Um, and we'll show pictures of sample leaks on the next page. So if you actually flip to the second page of this, it shows two pictures of, um, I wouldn't say the worst leaks, but um, representative leaks that we are actually, we've actually identified during our uh, video uh, inspection of it. The area that we're doing in the Morrisville area is the, silver, is the area in Silver Lake. Um, in that area, the reason we're doing that is number one, the flows are very high. The uh, pump station's overloaded and DEP is requiring us to address our hydraulically overloaded pump stations. But equally as important, this is in the budget for 2021 for to upgrade the Silver Lake pump station. So we want to remove as much extraneous flow as we can in this. Both um, sanitary sewer liner projects follow creeks. Um, so we've actually prepared the contract documents for this. The front end documents have been reviewed by Barbara um, and her law firm, and they provided comments back to us. We are still fine tuning these contracts um, and verifying access, um, uh, verifying locations of laterals and things like that. But if we go to the next page, you, uh, which is the, the budget for this, back one page. Ooh, construction budget's not there. Can you see the contract SWR1? Yes, right here. Um, you can see what's involved in, in this work is to first clean and televise, remove any roots, then we'll install the liner, and then we'll actually install a, a lateral liner up the first uh, four feet of the pipe. A lot of the money is um, actually placed into bypass pumping because these flows are so high. In several instances, we aren't actually able to get any video because the pipe is flowing full in these conditions. And we have not had a lot of rain compared to what we had in 19 and 18 in this spring. It's been wet. It's just, you know, normal wet spring, but it hasn't been excessive. Um, so, and what we may actually be able to do is slightly increase um, some additional linear footage because the design and inspection is actually in a separate line item in the budget. But you can see the 2020 LTMA budget for Nishami is $175,000. We've projected a cost of approximately 171,000. And if you scroll slightly lower on the cost projection, you will see in the Morrisville area, and this does include a 10% contingency, the 2020 adopted budget is for approximately 215,000. And the projected work is approximately $211,000. Now, if you go to the plan of the Neshaminy service area, and blow up into the red and yellow area, The area that was hatched in um, yellow actually extends underneath the area that was in bold in red. That was the area that we've televised. We're actually televising some additional areas that go out to Big Oak Road. And those television inspections have also shown some major leaks. So we may be modifying that based on that video inspection, which we are just receiving now. Um, which you can see we're basically going upstream from the meter pit and it's basically following that stream, which is gonna have a very high water table. So this is why we're targeting this area in here and we've identified it leaks within that area. Um, if we go to the next um, page, which is the Morrisville area and blow up into the red area, 
you'll, you'll, you will see that this area is the area that basically parallels the Silver Lake and then the Silver Lake Road. And we're basically in the area where we're off the road and there's a higher groundwater table and more surface runoff in there. Um, the reason that we did not extend it all the way out to Oxford Valley Road is because that manhole is located in the roadway and we have to bypass pump around this so that we can perform the work. And I did not want to have to shut down a lane in that road to have a bypass pump discharging into it. So we jumped one manhole section upstream um, of that. So does the board have any questions on the purpose of the liner program, the goals of it, the location, or any additional details that you'd like to have on the scope of work of these, uh, this contract? Have we asked for any grant money for these? Uh, we, we have not applied for a grant for these. These are included in the 2020 budget um, for their if I can weigh in on that, most of the funders that are looking uh, to do work, for example, like with pump stations, would not seemingly give money to do regular maintenance like pipelining. I know there's been managers that have talked about that, and it seems like those grants like we got with uh, the pump station, that that seems to be the, the framework for what they will consider funding. That's also been my experience. We've applied for grants for I and I work in the past for other clients and they have not been successful. Fred, any thoughts on, on how much this will reduce the, the, the impact on the, uh, on that pump station just volumetrically by doing this work? Is it going to have any impact on your sizing of the, the pump station later? I think I read that in one of the uh, documents. And that's the goal is, is to get it down. We know that there is a significant amount of leaks in here. Um, the problem that I have with um, what a lot of engineers will do is we can estimate the approximate rate of each leak and add them all up. The problem is, is that's taken from one spot in time. And what my experience has been is that the groundwater then backs up the trench and goes into another area. The, for the rule of thumb that I use is that on the initial first and second year that I keep about 80% of the leaks out that, 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 that I repair. I keep about 80% of that out. I'm hoping here to reduce the flows by approximately 5 to 10% to this pump station through this. However, um, right now, because we have, it's so hydraulically overloaded that, that it's hard to tell. Um, it usually honestly takes about three years in an area until we see a significant sustained reduction because we'll chase the flows, the leaks back up slightly higher in the, in, in the system, but years two and three. And that's why this is a minimum of a seven year program. And it's really an ongoing program. Um, so, you know, um, quite honestly, I will most likely look very good, the results, because we had a very wet 2018 and 2019. So the flows are going to be reduced when we do this. But I don't want to say that's 100% there because I went from an extreme high, hopefully to an average. So weather has a big impact. But, um, you know, I would say definitely around 10% reduction of flows, which is pretty significant when you're maxing out the capacity of a force main. Um, those additional flows um, cost a lot of electrical upgrades and horsepower upgrades um, because you're really maximizing the velocity in that force main. And my goal here is to get it down um, into a more normal range so we aren't paying additional money in electrical costs, uh, meaning higher pumps, higher electrical costs, bigger generator for the upgrade. Thanks, Fred. Are these two areas? Because I see, like, you, you jumped uh, from this area over down and over to the Big Oak Road. Have you encountered any other areas? No, because these were the – what we did was we looked at um, the areas that had the highest flows to the pump stations and the pump stations that were the most hydraulically overloaded. Mm -hmm. um, when we were down and, – and it's divided – the budget's divided by service areas. 
So I can only, I have a certain budget for the Morrisville area, certain budget for Bucks County Water and Sewer Authority. Bucks County Water and Sewer Authority has that bypass pump station, which number one tells me the line is without question hydraulically overloaded. But number two, that bypass pumping puts an additional stress on another pump station. So that is one of the reasons why we chose that down there. So like I said, I, I did not, I chose not to have spend more money than was allocated in our television budget, um, jumping around different areas because I know this is a, a problem area. Uh, we, we talked about Big Oak Road years ago and you know, we're supposed to have been done. So that that I, I do know it's just uh, now we're oh, uh, at Are you talking about Big Oak Road or Buck or Buck Creek? Well, the first the first one you showed. Go back to the uh, other uh, area that you want to get lined. Yep. Um, about the, I, uh, I, I, I can also answer that question. Is that in the twenty twenty two budget, the Big Oak Road liner? is included in addition to that as a special project. Okay. So, so we identified that and the Buck Creek in 2022. Um, so we have a certain allocation of approximately 175,000 for Nishamity and um, 225,000 adjusted for budget. Um, and then what we did was we looked at in the remaining items in that um, seven year budget that we prepared, what was our um, weakest link or, or item of most concern. And as we'll discuss later, the Brookstone pump station is the one that's rising out because we believe the anti flotation collar has broken. And we know Stackhouse, which we do have a grant for, and that grant needs to be used. Um, that's why they became part of this year's budget um and the um we also addressed um in 2021 we're addressing buck creek and silver lake because silver lake is at a point where it's really it, it, it barely keeps up the pumps run continuously there um so we address that and then uh in 2022 we hit the um uh, big oak road uh area down there because that is clearly an area in there. It's just not the highest priority for making sure that our sewers, the wastewater stays in our pipes. And that's my biggest priority when I worked on the overall budget. Fred, the service area, which service area is Big Oak? Mar uh, that section down there, I believe, is Marsville. Oh, no, 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 Bucks County, no, Bucks County, Bucks County, sorry. That's Bucks County. Just for, just Bucks for County. everybody's information, in that MMA service area, I'll just refer to that because I know the numbers off the top of my head. We had worked with Fred, you would come back basically suggesting that 25% of the system would need some level of lining uh, or improvement. And the amounts that we're looking at, you're talking about seven years, um, is modest because I think we determined in the end that we would get through 25% of the MMA service area with these sorts of dollars, even when we adjust them for inflation. It'll take about 60 years to get through 25% of the system, of just the MMA system. On the Neshemini system, it's not as um, it's not as dramatic as 60 years, but I believe it's about 35 years to get through 25% of the system. So even beyond the, a seven year cycle, this is gonna be something ongoing that's gonna have to take place pretty much from now uh, every year moving forward. I would totally agree with that. And I do this with a lot of my other municipal clients. We, it's just an ongoing thing. And the advantage of this compared to grouting, which is temporary, you have to come back, is this is a brand new pipe, which has no joints. We're reinstating the lateral connections at least four feet up. And um, uh, so it, it, it's one time in our lifetime. It's also a structural repair in case there are any um, actually missing pieces of pipe, which we may find. And when would you want to be starting these projects? Um, I believe the goal is to get a recommendation from the board, uh, from this authority, to the Board of Supervisors. The Board of Supervisors will be authorizing these to be bid in uh, at their uh, June 4th meeting, I believe it is. We would then that week post it on PenBid, and the goal will be to have it awarded 
in the July meeting and start work in August so that it's completed um, from between August to November. And that way it completes this calendar year's budget and doesn't carry over to next year. And then we'll repeat a very similar process in 2021 um, with the goal to actually uh, hopefully start the program and bidding earlier in the year there. Um, this was slightly delayed, obviously, with COVID-19 uh, and the ability to meet with our board and go through these. But um, uh, so this is definitely a this year budget and e e keep on implementing it, the budget every year going forward. Does the board have any other questions on this contract? So one, one question, basic one. Um, Fred, do we, you mentioned the schedule. Do we have, um, I think we do. I just want to confirm with, with COVID, as you mentioned, you know, the red, yellow, green phases. Uh, I'm assuming work like this is, is okay to move forward in our current phase of the, uh, the gov governor's um, phasing of, of what work can be done and can't be done? Absolutely, uh, for two reasons. Number one, very clearly, that construction has been opened up across the board. But even when construction was closed down, many of my municipalities continue to do this work and authorize this type of work because it was essential to the township functioning because they wanted to get it done during the summer to fall. Um, and didn't, and that could minimize the bypass pumping operation. Uh, so we actually did several projects in the uh, early part of winter, I would say January and February, that continued um, then through March and April uh, because they already started the, the townships, granted them specific waivers for that. And what, just one sort of more t technical question, just to make sure. Um, this this approach doesn't require any ground disturbance, right? It's purely that is correct. okay. That is correct. Um, yeah. It, the only reason I ask is we're in fl floodways and close to water bodies and crossing streams and whatnot, so permits and uh, and all that with ground disturbance could slow things up a bit. But this does not have that issue, so I just want to make sure. Yep, and that's exactly why we're using this technology. Besides the fact that there's no joints, is is that that it allows us to do with the minimum disturbance. And we, the majority of it, we can keep all of our trucks basically on roadways and they actually will just bring the air hoses over to uh, superheat this. Um, this is actually a, basically a tractor trailer sized boiler is brought out to heat these um, and do these runs. Um, so, and that's one of the things that our guys are going out and just confirming uh, all the access locations and things like that. So that way, um, we'll be able to identify it and point remotely um, to the people because the pre-bids and things like this may have to be done via, via a Zoom meeting um, and, then, and then access, but having pictures and things like that will help identify them so that when they provide, pro do their own independent site evaluation uh, for access, they can do this. It, for, for the supervisors, uh, it's our June 3rd meeting. Uh, no, oh, okay. Just, uh, June 3rd. Uh, it's, I trust we were talking about June 4th last night, so I have it on the brain. Um, it may be helpful if you have like a short video that shows what trenchless piping is, just so people can wrap their heads around what it is uh, when you present. That, I'm, like, I'm watching videos on my other computer over here. It's pretty yep, neat. I, I, I could definitely do that. And we actually have pictures. Um, usually, usually what I do is I actually bring in a piece of unlined and lined pipe to show them. Um, and I could probably get a picture of that um, to share. Thanks. Thanks, Phil. Would the board want to um, make a recommendation on this or wait until we go through all five contracts to make a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors? Do I get a consensus from anyone on the board? What, what, what do you think? We can hand, or tackle each, each one of these projects as he's done with it instead of having to go back? Does anybody got a consensus on it? I do one at a time. Okay. Scott? One at a time is fine. And Scott Phillips? Okay. One at a time? I'm sorry, I missed the question. I'm, I'm not, I don't think I'm hearing. Okay. 
we were talking about uh, discussing each one of uh, the projects after the presentation, instead of waiting to the end uh, to vote on all of them together. We, and the consensus of everybody on the board so far is to do it after each pr presentation. Okay. When you say the board, the, the members of the authority, or the board of supervisors, I, I just don't think I have enough background to, to answer that question. The sewer, sewer authority members. Okay. Uh, so, Scott, uh, Scott Frente, you got any uh, anything to say? Yes, sir. Uh, ready. If you you if you're allowed, if you want to make a motion, I'll I can make a motion or second it or. Uh, uh, I have nothing to say in terms of discussion. <laughs> Okay. I make a motion that uh, that we go ahead with the lining, and uh, let, let's get a second on that. I'll second it. All right. Discussion. Phil, can I ask you something? Yeah, go ahead. The, I, I don't want to cut off the board. Uh, my only um, consideration for for handling them all at once is in case there's any conflicts in schedule or budgets or timing at all um, through the end of the year. So in case you need to consider them in total versus one at a time, I, I have no idea uh, until the end of the presentation, whether or not that's, there's any potential for that. That's We're all. looking at a cost for $215,000. Am I right, Fred? Uh, no, projects? no, one is uh, 215,000. Uh, for the Morrisville area, okay. it is 175000 is what's in the budget for the Neshaminy service area. And this is uh, both slightly less than the um, approved budget for these line items. Approved township budget. Mm -hmm. And if I may, Phil, yes, after, if you go through and consider each one separately, and it appears that there may be a conflict in schedule, you, the, the board can always modify the earlier vote and make, you know, prioritize which project to go first. Okay. Then maybe we ought to just let Fred go through and then we'll just go one by one and then approve them and be done. So we'll give you 15 more minutes, Fred. Okay. Can we put up contract SWR 20-2, the executive summary? This is also a separate line item in the budget. And this is for the replacement or rehabilitation of existing manholes. Um, the authority has historically utilized this technology and, re and re rehabilitated manholes. These are the pink liners that Kelly did that had the 10 year guarantee. Uh, it provides not only corrosion protection, but also a structural repair of it. Um, so the, um, and what we've done is we have targeted the uh, discharge location of existing force mains um, because this not only removes I and I, but more importantly, um, prevents continued deterioration where you'd actually have a structural failure of a um, manhole. So um, really what we did was when we identify one, so we had Chris, our operations um, staff go out open these manholes and perform a physical inspection of them. Um, and when we identified one that was deteriorating, we then made a um, decision to line the next one downstream because if the hydrogen sulfide gas is coming out in one manhole, it's also most likely being released in the next downstream manhole. So this way we could, we could address the discharge of the force mains one, one time and not have to circle back uh, there and it'd be more of a permanent fix. This does have a 10 year um, uh, uh, guarantee on it. So if we go to paragraph of the second page on this. This basically provides us with a uh, the budget. So basically what's required uh, when you do this is you basically water clean, it's hydroblast, and you basically pressure wash it with an extremely high um, uh, pressure and then grind away 
and remove all of the deteriorated concrete. Um, and then we basically clean the concrete just to make sure there's no slime or biology on it. And then we install the spray on liner uh, in there. We do not have to bypass pump this. Um, once again, I may be able to actually increase the number of units that I uh, have in here because the design inspection is actually in a separate line item in the township budget. Um, so I may be increasing this by one manhole in each section. Um, and then if the bids come in lower than that, uh, we will have additional ones that we could do as an add-on change order. So we'll have additional manholes available to utilize these dollars to get this done as quickly as possible. Because as Kurt said, th th this is a 50 to 60 year project. So the goal of this is to maximize it every year. So that way we can accomplish it or higher priorities earlier. Um, on there. Fred, if, Fred, if you don't mind me asking, I don't have this in front of me, but just for to pull on the point as far as the number that we're doing, off the top of your head, I know we talked about this and I don't have it in front of me. Can you tell me the number of manholes approximately that we have in each of those areas, just so we have context that then, again, this is not significant in terms of aggregate numbers. It's sort of us getting started. It, it's, it's over 5,000 manholes that we have, and we're doing 10. That's the order of magnitude of what we're talking about here. Now, not all the manholes have issues, um, but just the number of pump stations that we had, we're just hitting the worst of the worst um, that we have within the budget that we have. If you go to the next page, which is an overall um, plan of the, the township sewer system, And um, identified in red is the location of the pumps of the uh, manholes that are deteriorating. And you will see that we've always done the next one down. Um, if you pan then to the left and lower corner, it will identify the pump station that that is a discharge from in both in the Shamini service area and the um, uh, Marsville. And as you can see, that they're not necessarily, they are, the common theme there is they're either very low flow or very long force mains. Haycock force mains, one of our longest force mains. So what causes hydrogen sulfide gas is basically the wastewater going septic. When it goes septic, you get hydrogen sulfide gas. When hydrogen sulfide gas gets released or discharged, um, it combines with water to make a very mild um, hydrosulfuric acid, which then attacks the concrete. Um, and many of our manholes prior to uh, our engagement did not have liners. They were raw concrete. We have since changed that. And we have an epoxy coating on the inside of all manholes um, that, that, that we are doing, uh, which will protect it significantly more than raw concrete. Um, does the board have any questions on the manhole liner contract? I have a question, Scott Phillips. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, is there any interplay between the the um, timing of your lining projects and the suit uh, the manhole lining projects? None at all. They are totally independent and can be done simultaneously. Okay, I was just thinking in terms of um, what you mentioned about the hydrogen sulfide. Um, I didn't know whether you said the common themes were along. Uh, what were the common themes? There were two that you mentioned. The common theme is a it's it's a long force main or force main with very uh, low flows. The result is a long detention time. It's the long <laughs> detention time that leads the wastewater to turn septic, which generates the hydrogen sulfide gas. Okay. I was just thinking about whether there was any interplay from the standpoint of your lining pipes. Does that uh, increase the detention time or is that just a secondary factor and not anything you really consider? 
Um, well, the lining is totally separate because the detention time is in the force main and we're not lining the force main at all. Um, and as a matter of fact, the lining will actually significantly reduce the friction factor within the pipe um, and increase the carrying capacity. That's one of the things that Bucks County Water and Sewer Authority did to the Neshaminy Interceptor was they increased the capacity by putting a liner in there, which reduced the friction factor. I'm actually doing that under a Route 202 crossing uh, down in Tredifferent Township um, to increase the capacity. Rather than install a new main, I was actually able to increase it 15 to 20% large pipe um, by reducing the friction factor. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from Fred? Fred, just one, one quick one. Um, from an urgency perspective, um, I know these are all high priority because they're deteriorating. Any that have just real immediate safety concerns that they're that in that bad of shape or is this more just, you know, they're, they're getting bad, but they're, they'll, they'll last for another six, six, 12 months. Oh, they last another six, 12 months. Not, not, not that they're gonna fall apart, but they're yeah, they, really they, they aren't falling apart. These are things that I can stick a key approximately a quarter inch to a half inch into the concrete. I have seen them where I've actually seen rebar exposed. They're not to that point yet, um, uh, but we also haven't scraped them. You can very clearly see where concrete's flaking off. So we're doing it, well, it should have been done earlier. We're not doing it too late. We're not in an emergency uh, contract situation where I need somebody to get out there, you know, in, in the very near future. So we're not to that point. Thanks. Fred, um, since we since we're in, it looks like we're in a couple of different service areas. Just curious, are the are the manholes uh, similar, or do we have unique manhole types in each service area? Or I just see that your unit price is about this is the same for for both. I'm just wondering if if we have any risk of a a bid being different because the manholes are different between the two service areas. Um, it, it's not between the two service areas. Um, it, it is really based on the depth. So when Chris went out and did that, he measured the depth. And for the purposes of this, the average depth actually worked out to be about the same, which is which you, which you would expect. Because normally a force main discharges um, to the top of a hill, which is a shallow manhole um, up there. So normally it's a terminal manhole. So they're normally six to eight feet deep. So that's why you see a uniform depth there. Um, is, is That's just a normal law of average. It doesn't mean it's always that. You can discharge right. to a 20 foot deep one, but we didn't find those in there. But I did have Chris um, and, for, and for the new board members, um, Chris is our uh, one of our operators uh, who works underneath Greg, uh, who actually went out and pulled manholes for me took pictures, took decks, and sent me a log. And we went through about 25 um, manholes to find bad ones. So it, it's not a terribly pervasive problem. I, I, I was glad to see. Thanks. All right, Fred, next. Okay. So the next item is the Brookstone pump station upgrade. This is the Brookstone pump station is the one that was identified as the, it is a wet well, dry well. It's a steel can in the ground. It's a steel can in the ground with a concrete wet well. Um, uh, Kelly was able to notice that this was rising out of the ground in late 2018, beginning of 2019. As a result of this, we went in and installed an emergency bypass for fear that we would have a catastrophic failure of this pump station. Um, what we believe is that the uh, steel um, dry well basically has tie rods that go down to a concrete anti-flotation collar. And what was, co what was common back then was to use steel tie rods. Um, well, steel tie rods, instead of being stainless steel, we're now at the end of 20, 30 years where the um, groundwater has just has just um, attacked the, con or the, the steel to the point that when we got 2018 very high historic groundwater tables, put more anti uh, 
buoyancy and started to push it and started to break some of them and push it up. Um, uh, so luckily it has not continued um, and that the it's basically equalized, but we're definitely on borrowed time, not only from the anti-flotation aspect of it, but the steel wet well, uh, or excuse me, steel dry well, it's just corroding from the outside in. In order to keep these long-term, you need to replace your cathodic protection. And we've never replaced cathodic protection on any of these steel cans. And we have a relatively aggressive, not overly aggressive, but relatively aggressive groundwater table out here. Um, and then even more so with the water levels going up and down um, in these locations, because we're relatively close to the river. So our groundwater table does go up and down um, and it, it's that allowing air. Steel is fine if you keep it underwater. Steel is fine if you keep it out of water. It's that when you take the water in and out. The other major issue with this pump station is that when it was originally designed, it was designed for a much lower peak factor and doesn't meet DEP standards. So a lot of our hydraulically overloaded pump stations are, are almost by definition going to happen because the old DEP standard was a peak factor of 2.4 or 2.5. And now it ranges from 3.5 to 4.0. So that's one of the reasons. But here, um, you know, we've had problems with not only the impellers wearing out, um, a lot of issues, but we couldn't even do a drawdown test on this because the inflow was coming in. We ran the pumps and we could not drop it, the, the flow down. With both pumps running, the water level just stayed the same. Um, as a result, we went out and I designed this almost like I would a new pump station. I did a unit count on the number of units. I used a very high flow per EDU, which is what we're seeing of almost 400 gallons per day, and multiplied that by the peak factor uh, required by DEP. And as a result, we're going from a 15 horsepower pump to a 25 horsepower pump. Um, in order to stay within the budget here, we're only going to be able to operate one of the two pumps on the existing emergency generator because I don't have money left to replace the generator. Now, if this job comes in under budget, then uh, and there's enough money, I would make the recommendation to replace the generator to operate both pumps. DEP allows only one pump to operate. It's designed to have only one pump operate. The capacity of one pump right now is going to be double what the capacity of the uh, previous pumps were. Um, this job, which is, it was ironic. I did the construction, detailed construction cost test with my engineer and then looked at the budget afterwards. And we we're literally within about $500 from what we had done before to what we had done on our detailed breakout. So I know that that's a very good number there, but that does include a 10% contingency. But you'll see the projected cost for this is 334,180. And our budget is $334,750. Um, and if we uh, go to the next page. Fred, while we're going to the next page, can I ask you a question? Do you have any idea or Greg, how old this pump station approximately is? That's about 40 years old. It's as old as that development. I'm sorry, you said 40? Correct, 40. And the design life of the steel can is approximately 30 years. My, my question, Fred, is, and Mayor Greg, see if anyone knows, didn't we just recently take this over from Toll Brothers or something? No, this one we've had since it was basically dedicated as a development. Bill, if you remember, this is the pump station where it was on um, private ground. Yeah, and well, then that, lot, that all got divided up. And now we got to redo the easement, but we've always had the the pump station. Okay, now my memory's back. Thank you, Barbara. All right, so yeah. now being that you're going to make a new pump house, is there any chances getting grants for this? Unfortunately, there's no grant programs that are open right now to be able to do this. So if there was, I clearly would, but there's no grant programs open at all that I'm aware of. No, well, I think we would need to investigate this because, you know, many times we've heard no grant money and yet we turn around 
and we find the grant and get some money. Well, the concern here, though, is that this could become significantly more expensive if it becomes an emergency project. Well, this we, we've heard this over six months ago, uh, right? And, you know, we're, we're to the point, yeah, we know it has to be done, but, I mean, you know, it's just like with Stackhouse. You know, we've gone over well over a year on that, and we know that was on its last leg. But yet we got grant money for it, and you're going to explain how close we are to finishing this project. Uh, respectfully, Phil, we actually had a have a bypass pump out there about, I guess, about three months ago, mm -hmm. where it was in a failure mode. We were able to get it back running. We didn't have to use bypass, but it, it's a pretty serious situation on that pump station. Yeah. Well, we knew that uh, back when Kelly uh, gave us the report too. So I, I agree with you. So, all right. And, and unfortunately we had to wait until this budget cycle to get it incorporated into the budget. It, it was too late to get it into the budget last year. So this is why we prioritized it this year and why we pushed the big Oak Road lining back. Um, okay. So basically Brookstone is a, a priority at the moment. Yes, I would say it is it is the highest probability of a catastrophic failure that we have in our system. Greg says that I'll believe I believe it. So Yeah, and there there is a creek right behind it too. So we don't yep. want to oh, I know that. So all right. Quick quick question, Fred. Um what what grant programs would you typically look at if they were open here? Is, I'm assuming they're through DCED or something like that. Yeah, project like this. The best grant program is the PA Small Water and Sewer uh, Program. It's definitely the best. Um, there's about $60 million normally in that, whereas the H2O project is significantly less than that. Um, and it's for bigger projects that are usually politically earmarked. Um, so when they open that program, a lot of that money is already allocated. Um, sure. But this would be a great one. And that's the program that we're successful on the uh, Stackhouse screen. And we and we know for not to, I'm not calling yet on this at all. I'm just wondering, we, we know for certain that, that this program is, is closed because of, for whatever reason? No, it, 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 no, it's closed. As a matter of fact, they are still pending. They've been pushing um, the, the award of uh, applications that were made last year. They were supposed to be made in May. That's now been pushed to July 17th. So they actually have a lot of pending applications that they uh, haven't even awarded to open it up again. Do we have any pending? Just no, we don't have any pending this round. Course. Okay. Yep. No, we okay. do not. What we're going to do on this project is um, we work with our electrical engineer. So instead of having an emergency diesel pump running to bypass pump it, we're actually going to rent an electrical because their house is right there. And it really wouldn't be fair to them to have a diesel pump running all night for two months. That's gonna take, because we're actually gonna have to bypass pump and then actually cut the top off of the existing um, dry well um, and um, fill it with flowable fill just to place the wet well uh, on it um, and remove it. If we go to the plan view, the section view, or the plan view of the of this, you can see how it goes basically right over top of the existing. Um, so if you move your cursor down to the dash circle, move your cursor slightly right there, that is the existing dry well that we're going to be taking out um, and installing the new valve vault on the other side of it and basically pumping right through. And if you pan up on the screen, you'll come to a manhole up there. That's where we installed the bypass pump and quick discharge connection as an emergency, just in case it did fail, that we could pump from the wet well directly into this. If you go to the next page, which is a section view plan of this pump station, you can see what the hatched area in there is actually the existing dry well. And that's actually how it looks. So what we're basically going to do is take and, and convert the existing wet well into a submersible pump station. So we're actually going to install the pumps down in there, put a new access hatch on it, and then basically pipe it right over top of the and through the existing top of the uh, dry well 
but I don't want to put a structure on top of that, even though I'm filling it with crushed stone or flowable fill uh, and sealing it with non-shrink grout. Um, there is still a, um, you know, I don't want to place a structure right on that um, because I do believe that that structure is ultimately going to fail and then it'll expand out into the um, ground. So does the board have any questions on this project? Can I make one point since this came up real quick, just so everyone's aware, if we look in the budget that we did this year, there is a seven year capital plan. And that capital plan, besides the lining that we've talked about every year, does outline the pump stations. So if there is, because I know Phil, you were asking about this. So if that grant program opens up later this fall or what have you with a funding cycle, we have these lists of things year after year that we could pick and choose from to try to, to offset these costs by going for these grants. And we've also identified a number of pump station upgrades. We've done the construction cost estimates. So we would be prime and ready to take advantage of any grant opportunities that were to be there. That was one of the reasons that we prepared a seven year budget so that depending on the type of grant program, what their evaluation criteria were or their uh, grant limits, that we would have an a la carte um, uh, program there that we could pick what we felt would be the highest priority, but then the one that we'd most likely be successful to, to receive on. Okay, next. Okay, next one is um, the good one. So we can answer all of your questions about grants because wow. we did receive a, a grant for this one. This is the Stackhouse Pump Station and Conveyance System. There's actually two contracts here. Uh, there's actually two contracts here. The reason there's two contracts is that there's different specialties to install a gravity uh, pipe, a gravity sanitary sewer system, and a force main than there is for a mechanical um, contract. There may actually be um, a third contract, a 20-4A and B, um, depending on the amount of the electrical costs. If it goes over a certain amount, I have to bid electric separate from structural mechanical. Um, and it really depends on, on how we classify it. And we've asked for determination on this uh, from our electrical engineer that if I buy the pumps and controls as part of the contract, the remaining electric work is not as significant. But because I do have a permanent generator here, we need to do this. Just to refresh the board, the Stackhouse pump station is an existing bladder style pump station. Um, that's alternating bladders that fill up and push with air. It's located behind a house. There is no vehicular access back to it. It is so antiquated that we there are no parts available. We have to go out and custom machine this. And we're at the point now where we are scavenging either old parts that we have uh, kept back in the shop and brought them out or custom machining it or one piece that we can take here and we can buy a replacement piece, you know, for another aspect of it, such as the style of floats and things like that. So we've worked to obtain an easement or obtaining easements for the gravity line across two adjoining properties. And then we have purchased a separate um, parcel uh, of land for the actual pump station. So um, as you can see, um, for the, our construction cost estimate is approximately 590,000. The budget, the approved budget is 592,000. Now we have included a 10% um, a contingency within that. Um, however, the net cost to the township only be $167,092. One of the other reasons that we have to do the um, breakout, the contracts and the line items is that the grant is only for the pump station and the force main. So they're going to be broken out separately so that they can be applied for by the grant and, and the purposes of, of line items that way. Um, if we look at, um, go to the overall plan, actually, if we look at it, if you actually go to the plan and profile plan, which should be the last exhibit in the overall thing, One more. 
right there. Um, you can see the existing pump station is located behind that house and there's no vehicle access. There's actually a retaining wall that goes right around it. Um, the, that the pump station is located about two inches on my screen over from the north arrow in the upper right corner. Um, and you can see if you were to excavate down there, that is a steep hill that goes right down to the canal. So there's really no way to stabilize that. Um, and um, it's got a retaining wall right above it. So you can see that there's really no way to maintain this. You can't get a vehicle in there. There's really nothing we can do. So we are then going to divert the sanitary sewer flows to the left of the screen. And if we pan to the left of the screen, you'll see we're going through the backyard of two houses. Very nice houses. Have to move a shed. Some very expensive and very nice retaining walls back there. Um, next house over, I mean, this house, that grass looks like a putting green, quite honestly. Uh, we've met with the property owners at least five to six times out there, both individually and together. Um, gone over every tree that will need to be removed. We've staked it for them so they're aware of it. Um, coming over to the new pump station, so we're basically going to flow by gravity to the left, and then the pump station will pump it back to the right. If you pan back, you can see the location of this pump station. Uh, that's you just pan further away so we can see a larger view of it. You can see, and I'll show you on the site plan of how we're accessing um, down the uh, to this, but this pump station is much more remote. Um, the small control building that we have, we basically have a, um, a fake stone on the outside of it so that it will basically look um, down there, because you will see it from the canal potentially, um, but it'll look like an old spring house that was just preserved um, in there. And it's almost the same cost as a, if you were to do a traditional block building um, down in there. So we basically have a, a very small um, pump station uh, control building, which is a stick frame building with a uh, fake stone facade. We've purposely placed a generator outside because it's quieter outside. I could put a sound enclosure on it that if I put it inside, I couldn't put the sound enclosure on it. You can see we do get very deep as, 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 as we get down in here. If we go to, if you go back two pages, I see three pages probably. Next page, you can see this really is the, what we have there is we've kept the wet well down and that control building that we have there it's basically a 10 by, uh, or 12 by eight maybe. Um, I forgot off the top of my head, um, uh, control building. And that will look like a small, um, uh, by putting the stone on it, it'll look like a spring house, which is the closest thing. I moved the generator as far away from the existing house as I can. I have also directed the exhaust of that. There's actually a valley uh, further to the west, uh, northwest of this, that would go down into a very mature forest as well. Big trees, actually. It's just, you know, it's big, big trees down there. Um, but then it gets very thick as it drops in there. So I'm trying to direct all my noise away from the houses in this overall development and down into that area. There's a fairly large lot, and then I believe it backs up even to an open space before it gets to the next development. Um, does the board have any questions on this project? When's it going to start? Um, the uh, same exact timeline. We're going to, with your, with your guys' recommendation, we're going to go in front of the board of supervisors um, for advertisement of the bids on June 3rd. We'll then bid it during the month of, of June, awarded at the July authority, or excuse me, the July uh, supervisors meeting. Um, and then we would, um, you know, shop drawing could start. So this one's honestly going to take probably to December, um, you know, just because of you have longer lead times here compared to a lining project uh, of a generator. The generator is normally eight to 12 weeks. Yeah. Um, pumps are normally six to eight weeks. So Brookstone will be much faster than this because we don't have an emergency generator. Um, and here, Brookstone's basically the installation of, of pumps, piping, and things like that. Whereas here, you have to precast, you know, get the precast concrete um, ordered, and 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 that. And there's just a significantly 
uh, longer lead time items and a little bit more complex um, just shop drawing review and approval process. So I, I think this is going to start in August, but probably go to December. And I wouldn't be shocked if we didn't complete it until January, you know, depending on how aggressive the contractors are and, and what their workload is. And Barbara, we were over all the hurdles with the homeowners. No, and I'll tell you why. First off, to keep in mind the contract price that Fred gave you is for the actual pump station. It's not the cost of the land that's been acquired. So that's an additional 44000 on top of everything at a minimum. The property owner of where the pump station is going to be constructed, she's all on board. So that is, we can go right away with that. One of the two property owners where I need the easement is much more objectionable or opposing the project. And I'm trying to work out a settlement with him. But as of right now, that has not yet occurred. And okay. because of the COVID-19, his deadline to file a written response to the condemnation will be coming up in June. And depending on what he does, it may defer or postpone our ability to lay the line in that easement area, but I continue to work with him. Yeah, Fred, that's the reason you're talking about doing this in two contracts, correct? Because in the end, we could still do the, the uh, putting the pipe in as a separate contract and move forward with the uh, reconstruction of the station itself. You're exactly correct. And we've actually included in the pump station design, the influent, um, I saw the influent manual, but the first section that goes out to within five feet of the adjoining property. So we could award that, do that, and that'd be the majority of the grant. So we wouldn't lose the grant while we finalize the access uh, to the next uh, two properties. That's good. Anything else? Is that that is all I have for these five. Fred, just a quick question on the grant process, just because I'm not familiar with it. When does when does that money come come through? Is it beginning a project? Is it reimbursed afterwards? Is it um, direct pay to the contractor? What, when does LMT get the benefit of that grant? It's a reimbursement, um, but it's done monthly. We can do as many draws as frequently as as we desire. So, and it's only a fifteen percent match. Um, so, we've expended monies for my soft costs already in design which can be utilized as the match for it. So then as we receive invoices in uh, and we pay, and so when I receive an invoice in um, and I recommend approval of it, uh, we actually will then process that to the DCED. That's a Commonwealth Financing Authority, but it, it's implemented by DCED. Um, and we will receive reimbursement for that. Right now they're flying. I'm getting reimbursement back in about two to three weeks. Um, and out in the first one, and after that, it's about a week, week and a half. Um, you know, they just seem to be at their computers and able to do that. It's normally much longer than that, much longer meaning, you know, the first one takes a month and then it takes 10 days for every subsequent one. But no, we, we will be reimbursed as we go along. Thank you. Fred, does, you mentioned generators. Um, what, type of, what type of fuel will power these generators? Um, they're diesel generators back there. So do they require separate air permits, like general permits from the PADP? No, they do not. And, no, and, okay. and that's why we, we purposely make sure that we have ones and we don't have that. Okay. And then, um, Barbara, with respect to the risk on the landowner, um, from a schedule perspective, do you, what's the most likely case scenario if they say uh, – Sorry if you hear background noise. My daughters are going at each other right now. Um, what, what's the most likely case scenario if the if the landowner continues to be potentially objectionable, let's say, uh, through June? Any thoughts? I would say under normal circumstances that the issue could be disposed within 60 days. The problem is because of COVID-19 and court closures, there is such a backlog of things. I don't know how quickly issues will get processed. They're only handling emergencies. So I would say out of an abundance of caution, at least double that to maybe four months, depending on how quickly they get through. And 
I've been trying to explain to him the difference between the different things that he can file. What I'm looking at is a filing opposing the condemnation, and there's very limited grounds that you can do that. That's wholly separate from an argument that there, he's not getting paid enough. So I'm trying to get that distinction understood, which may help. But right now, I don't have anything definite. So, Fred, thanks, Barbara. Given that potential schedule hiccup, um, I know I understand you're breaking up the project into two contracts. Where, using that scenario, um, when when do you think that part of the project could get done, and what part of that is done under grant versus not under grant? Um, you know, I, I think the, knowing how this is, until we would get through the bidding process and the um, uh, award of, of the contract, I think we'll have the easements there in place because we're not talking about awarding it. And then we could even hold this at worst case scenario to the August meeting and hold their bid slightly longer. And I believe clearly by August, we will have obtained these because as Barbara will explain, Worst case scenario is if we do a taking of it, preliminary objections will go through, and then we're just arguing in a court of view about the money. Um, so we can proceed with the project. And there's no question that this is very clearly, we'll meet all the criteria for that. And I cannot see a preliminary objection being able to be sustained. I'm not a lawyer, obviously. But. Yeah, I understand. So if forgetting the, sorry, Barbara, forgetting the legal stuff for a second, just assuming that schedule. We, let's say we award in August. When does it get done? When, when well, you... on that part of it, this is only 433 feet of gravity sewer main right. and force main. So it's 10 days of work. Gotcha. Worst case scenario. I mean, this job could be done start to finish from shop drawings to um, my signing off on a punch list in 30 days. Good. It's a day. It, it's an open field to be a day's work, you know. And I understood, Dan, that the biggest, the longest taking time of the project would be the actual construction of the pump station. So, yeah. So I, I could I could start this, you know, in September, October, and I'll still be ready. And that's why it would be important to proceed with the pump station, knowing that we have firm legal ground that will ultimately obtain those two easements. And they haven't been objectionable. We're down to talking about a little bit of money. No, the the one property owner has been the, the most difficult. So, and I'm not sure what his objection is uh, as opposed to just money. So, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. He's trying to put his uh, a septic system in. He's off the line. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Are you done, Fred? Yes, I am. Well, that was a good 30 minutes. So, to the board members, we've heard everything that needs to be done. I take it that Brookstone seems to be a big priority. And if I can get some input from the members, what they think about uh, going ahead with the uh, Brookstone pump station. Scott, you're first. Rente. Yeah, uh, I think, uh, think uh, we should move forward with it and get it done as soon as possible. Okay. Joe? <clears throat> yep, sorry. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Scott Phillips? Scott Phillips? Yes, um, yeah, I just uh, muted my phone. Um, from what I heard, that sounds like uh, the priority. Okay. Well, so I want to put a motion on on the floor that uh, we'll move with this and let the supervisors know that we're in favor of getting this done first. Anybody want, I'll put a motion on that. I think the Brookstone pump station should be uh, a priority and uh, be taken to the uh, board of supervisors at their next meeting to be uh, replaced. Do I have a second? I'll second that, Phil. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So, Dan, that you got the approval on that to move forward with, with Brookstone because last thing we need is a problem in the township. 
Right. We, I'm the oldest member on the board and I remember a problem many, many years ago. So, uh, well, with Stackhouse, Fred, basically, you know, you can, you, like you said, you can start to see even in uh, October, November, December, right? And how, when would, if we don't do anything, what's the time frame that we don't lose our, lose that grant? Um, we have to use it by 2021. Um, it's June. Um, the concern there, and Greg's going to jump in on this one, is that one's on as much borrowed time for different reasons because of the mechanics of it. Right, we know that. We were told that for about a year, for a year now, and that's why we've been we kept pursuing this. Mm -hmm. Just uh, about a month ago, we had a rush of delivery of parts uh, that were special parts, and uh, we got lucky to get them in time. I don't know how many more times we can do that, uh, and that's not. I'm not trying to like you know blow uh, call yeah. call anything out anything like that, but it, it's. It's one of those really last legs here, too, and you can't even get to it to bypass pump. Yeah, well, you know that, Greg, because you were on the board with me when we were, um, you know, just, uh, talking about uh, purchasing the land. So, yeah. Bill, and the other thing, just so you know, when I was having discussions with the one property owner, he himself said to me that over Easter there was a major issue, and he was waiting to see sewage in the street. So even he, who's opposing it or giving me – you know, not willingly just agreeing to it yeah. has made comments that it's on its last legs. I'll put a motion out that I think the uh, Stackhouse pump station should be started since we have the grant money we don't want to lose. And uh, that to be uh, given to the Board of Supervisors at their next meeting so that uh, bids, uh, we can start receiving bids on that project. Anyone want to second that? Just for clarity, Phil, you're talking about 20.4 and 20.5 combined as Stackhouse. Is that what you're calling Stackhouse or just 20-4? Um, I'm just talking about getting the pump station up because they still have to get through what the second phase of getting that homeowner through court and everything. Sure. So at least, you know, we'll be ahead of the game if, if, when um, the courts decide on what's going to happen before Greg can't get any more parts or manufacture them at this shop, right? So. Hey, Fred, quick question. I thought we had three three years from the end of FY18 from the grant. You're saying we're not we're only good till June 2021 on the grant? Yeah, that's three years. FY is July 1 to June. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to lose the grant money. So I got the motion. Just need a second. Anyone? I'll second it again. Okay, all in favor? With an I and okay, Dan, that's the next one to take to the supervisors. Then comes up the manhole lining. This is the first I've ever heard of doing the lining, Fred. Kelly's actually historically always done it. So Kelly has done it for up until the last three years. Kelly has every year spent around $20,000 doing manhole lining. And we have a significant number, meaning 30, 40, 50 of line manholes in our system by this. And, and this is really, it was part, when we sat down and did the overall budget, what we did was we looked at, what does it take to properly operate and maintain our system? Because we have done very few projects in the last five years. Um, so now we need to start to look at what should we be doing now as part of a long-term project so we aren't going out and taking a $2 million bond to handle sewer issues that like may have been done in the past and then doing nothing for 10 years. Just put it in a, in, in a regular budget and just do it every year we do a project and we continuously do it. Can I ask a question? Sure you can. Fred, to what extent are the manhole and the uh, pipelining relative to the CAP program and DEP's regulations regarding reduction of I and I's? We are required um, in the Neshaminy 
to do, we identified as part of our corrective action plan, the lining of manholes and the installation of the cured in place pipeline. So we're actually, we signed an agreement with, we have a, a requirement with DEP that if we do not do this and we do not comply, no additional EDUs will be released. So this would shut down the sale of sewers in the township if we do not comply with this. I thought we had a 10 year plan. We do, but we have to comply with the milestones of every year. So if you do year one, you get year one EDUs. If you do year two, you get year two EDUs. If you don't do year three, you don't get it until you get them. So in an essence, we have to do this project, these two projects this year to comply with DEP. That's absolutely correct. And depending on what projects come through, there could be a million dollars in tapping fees that, that, that are generated that help the budget, you know, overall and pay for these things. And if you don't do it, you know, and that's all, you know, we as a sewer authority have no say over what projects the township approves, but our goal is to make sure that sewers are available for any projects that the Board of Supervisors want to support and pass. I would hate to have us then want a project to go through that provides um, uh, um, a new tax base, a commercial tax base, or whatever it is that they want, and then have us not be in compliance with our corrective action plan, and we have to say that we cannot provide sewer service to it. And I was looking at it from the angle of potential litigation and being forced to pay fines and penalties too by DEP in addition to failure to release or refusal to release EDUs. You're absolutely correct, uh, especially with the case of our overloaded um, uh, pump stations. DEP has allowed us to continue to work while they're overloaded because we have a plan of when we're going to upgrade them. And so long as we comply with our plan, DEP understands that we need additional sewer rental income coming in to pay for this. If I may, when we had uh, the, the wetter year, I think it started in 2018, we saw a significant jump in our sewer rental fees, what we pay to, to the authorities that treat the uh, sewer, uh, to the order of an, an additional million dollars, I believe it was. So if we don't get a, a start on it, we're never going to be able to get that down. And we're treating clean water essentially, instead of just sewage water. Yeah. So basically the main, the manholes are the, it's the cheapest thing. They're going to $20,000. It's just part of a good overall sewer rehabilitation project. They address, you know, short in place pipeliners are the most important, but you have to address your manholes. And you also don't want to try to avoid emergency repairs. Uh, that's why we're looking at the force main um, discharge, the structural repair as much as I am I and I. And, and they're related. When it attacks the concrete, holes form around the joints and water comes in. All right. So if someone wants to make a motion on the manhole cover uh, line, please do. On which lining, manhole or both? Manhole. You want to do both or? No, I, I want to take the, uh, the, line, the liners uh, for Silver Lake and everything separate. That's this right. Just the manhole I'll make, covers. I'll make the motion. Anyone want to second it? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Dan. Or that. On the linings, Fred, which is the worst, which is the worst section? I don't know if you could say there's really a worst. They're they're all pretty bad. Yeah, I was gonna say I mean, I mean, if, I mean, if we had to say just do one instead of two, which one would you want to do first? Well, the problem is is that I would do Silver Lake because I'm doing that pump station, but the, but that that's not the issue. I'm required to do the, the Derbyshire in order to comply with my corrective action plan by the DEP. Um, but um, so and I know that that it over, it overflows. We can barely you know we have to use the bypass pump. Kevin um, Shire, we, we know had problems. That goes back, uh, Greg, if you remember with Kevin, remember? He went in there and welded the uh, manhole cover 
because you used to pick up the manhole cover and come out and that lady came to our meetings. Yeah, and it, it continues to be an issue in there. Yeah. yeah. And we're actually pumping to another pump station and overloading that in the worst mm -hmm. time. By the same token, the flows are so heavy in Silver Lake that I really can barely video it. The video only shows the top two inches of a 12 inch pipe. And this is during, there's no rain events when we're doing this now. How, this hard, how, how hard is this going to hurt our budget? It, 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 it's included in the budget. It's a line item in the adoption. One, one we were going to do in 2021. No, no, no. I am doing lining for the next 50 years. In some years, in 2021 and 2022, I'm not only doing the allocated, um, you know, uh, line item for the Nishamini and the um, MMA, but I'm doing additional lining because it's so important. Once I take care of the pump stations that are, are, you know, more of a catastrophic, you know, lining to drive, because what it does then is it generates a return on investment over time, not in any given year. But by reducing our treatment costs from Barstow and more importantly, um, Bucks County Water and Sewer Authority, because those rates are going to go up as the city of Philadelphia combined sewer system increases the rates. So the sooner we reduce those flows, the sooner we start our payback. Or it's not just a payback, but it's from getting significantly worse. Because when you have holes in a pipe and, and you get that high pressure water that you saw in that picture, that's, mm -hmm. that's jet blasting. It makes the holes bigger. Yes, we go. So, Kurt, how hard does that hurt our budget? Well, that's let me frame that a different way, Phil. Um, we have budgeted for it. We've accounted for it. As everyone knows, there was a big increase this year. Okay. Increase as it was put in will accommodate what Fred has talked about for as long as we go until um, until the new treatment plant with MMA or whatever happens will go on. So the increase this year, which accommodates essentially $2 million in projects and MMA, what have you, will be enough that those rates will stay flat for the next five years until something would come up with the treatment plan. So, so next year, we're not going to uh, raise no. the rates uh, 68%? No. Zero. If I may. So next year. We next stay, year. I might stay in Lower Makefield now. So, but I mean, so again, Phil, Part of that discussion was, and what I worked with Fred on, right, was to try to level these expenses out at next year. Fred actually, originally when we met, had another item or two he, he was thinking that should be in 2020, and we pushed them back to 2021, so we were sort of flat every year without having to, to do that anymore. So it had that big hit again this year with the idea that it will accommodate pump stations and lining as we go forward. Yeah, yeah. And Phil, that's why the uh, Big Oak Road liner got pushed back to 2022. That was on my budget this year. But because of you being able to do that. 2021. 2021. So, Fred, I see, in I see no problem in doing the lining stand, basically, because, you know, as long as we, it's in our budget, uh, so we don't have to go out for uh, bonds, bid bond, or um, get a bond for it to cover the cost. I mean, yeah, I'm definitely uh, for to get the lines. So it's with the board, what do you think? The board members, <coughs> so Joe, I mean. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm very much in favor of this. I mean, I, I, I look at those photos and see the the uh, the inflow coming in there, the, the, the payback on this, just for not treating this, that voluminous amount of groundwater, even just in dry periods. It has to get it has to get done in my view, and it's budgeted. I think it's a no brainer, so I, yeah. I would be fully supportive of it. Scott Phillips, yeah. Um, I'm really, as you as you can tell, this is my first meeting. I'm a little bit behind on things as to how even the projects that are being discussed tonight got on the got on the plate as opposed to potentially other projects. Um, well, I like, were on, on the on the list. Pardon me. Uh, a couple of these projects were on the list going back to uh, even into last year. Okay. So, and the projects I've heard discussed all sound very necessary. Um, I, I just, in terms of prioritization, I didn't know if there was another list that 
uh, kind of a rolling list that uh, you pick from to choose which ones are discussed for any particular year. And that's where I don't have any, you know, any background. But the ones I've heard tonight sound very, very, very important. All right. Our seven-year plan probably has, well, it's three tight pages uh, of, of stuff. And I would say that there is, There's probably 12 times 12 items in, in every one. So we probably have, you know, you know, you're talking about 80 items on our overall list. Some of them are repeats, but no, we definitely do it and we prioritize it. And when we look at a, each year budget, we may swap something around, but we spent months going over the priority with the operations staff, with Kurt, with Greg, with my opinion to come up with a hierarchy of what we do and why and when. Yeah, and I like I like the idea that you have like a, a recurring project categories like uh, pipelining or the manhole lining, and then within that category, you you choose the priorities for any particular year based on your operating experience and and you know other factors that may come into play. So it's been it's been working. Today. That all looks good from a first time observer. Okay, I'll make uh, I'll make sure you get some materials. Scott, what do you think, Brent? Brent Day, what do you think? I don't have any comments on it. Uh, we can move forward if you want. Anybody want to make a motion so we can pass it on to Dan? Because he's not saying nothing. He's waiting. You know. But uh, can I ask a question about sure. it? So, so, Fred, as as we look at say the seven year plan. Um, the looming in the background here at some point this year, we're looking, you know, there's potential for a sewer sale, right? So that might take a year, that might take whatever it may take. Let's say it takes a year. So that means what this year, next year, those, those are projects we might do. Then the rest of them, they're on a plan, but it, there wouldn't be the responsibility of the township. Is that fair as a starting point? Yes, but, 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 you know, the way I have to look at it right now, because I don't have a vote on whether we sell or not, I have to assume that we're not selling and implement a long-term plan. And then I'm sure that this plan will then be turned over, if it would be sold, to whoever purchased it, and they would continue with this program. Um, I would be shocked if any one who purchased this would not implement this exact or a very similar plan, yeah. because the issues don't change just the owner of it. Yeah, but I think as part of that process, we have to be careful about saying our rates will be flat for the next seven years because we exactly. we, we may not own it. So that's, the, right? And I know um, one, of, one of my concerns right now, uh, just because of, you know, 30 some odd million people unemployed and, and uh, having, you know, various issues with, um, I don't know how, Lower Makefield is hit per se because I haven't seen numbers on that yet. But um, how this this whole situation is hitting people's pocketbooks this year, I just want to make sure that every project we do is absolutely necessary. Um, so as if we if we have the opportunity, you know, thirty seven percent is a huge rate increase um, that hits people in the pocketbook in the worst possible time given where we're at. So I want to make sure if there is any opportunity to defer any of this to save, save people some money in a safe way um, that we consider that so that, you know, like I said, people are hurting right now. So, so, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate that I work from home and I, I've been okay, but I'm not sure that I'm in the majority here. So that's the only caveat I would add to this. If I may, and Dan, I understand where you're coming from. But I'm taking a look at it from the perspective of protecting the township. As I understand, these projects are pretty high on the list of needing to be done. And for years, people have said how the system has to be upgraded. And each passing year, it only deteriorates more. My concern is if we sit on the project knowing that the money's in the budget, what ramifications could possibly befall the township for not doing the project, which could ultimately result in additional fees being paid by way of, uh, you know, penalties, surcharges, lack of EDUs for projects. So 
I, yeah, um, I don't disagree to... with you at all. It's it's the balance. It's it's a it's a balance. It's a cost benefit analysis, weigh, weighing multiple factors. So I don't disagree with anything you said because I that's the world I live in every day, balancing that stuff for for my clients. Um, so so I'm not saying yeah. anything. It, something is weighed 75% versus 25%. It's all just part of the overall equation. And but I appreciate get, your statement. If we get another outbreak, as they're calling for in the fall, uh, it's going to affect even people like Dan sitting home uh, and me. So, I mean, yeah, everybody's got to kind of prepare themselves. But I think these 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 are only going to be the only uh, things we're going to do this, uh, this year. Am I correct? And outside of just regular maintenance, Craig? These five, these projects. Oh, no, that's correct. That yeah, is. These were the main capital projects. This is it. Yeah. So everything else is just going to be maintenance. Maintenance and uh, treatment costs. Yeah. So I make a motion that we do the, do the liners as part of our seven plan, year plan to get it done, and being that uh, we do have the money, and that there's the possibility we still might look for grant money for uh, Brookstone. So. I'll put the motion that uh, we should go ahead and do the, the lining. Second, anybody seconding? I'll second it, Phil. Okay. All in favor? I say aye. Aye. All right, so Dan, there you go. That's the five projects. And we're going to look, for, we're still going to look for grants for uh, Brookstone. To help we'll offset look, the cost. We'll look for grants for any project that's eligible. Yeah, well, you're too busy. That's why I'm asking Dan. Uh, yeah, I, I'm more than happy to reach out to our local representation yeah, to uh, yeah. um, try and get grants. Kurt, you want to give us an update of what's going on with the uh, possible sale? The, re the request for bids is out. Um, I would expect that the board will be given an update um, probably early June regarding uh, bidders and how those things come in. All right. Bill, I can, I can add to that, that the board is, has discussed, and it, this is public, so that is purely focused on a straight sale versus any sort of uh, <clears throat> uh, concession lease or public private partnership. Um, yeah. There was a discussion about that. Um, you could ask individual board members how they voted on that. I personally was opposed to limiting the options, but um, that's where it's at right now. Um, I'm not sure what the schedule is. I'm not sure if the SOAR subcommittee will get a chance to review any of that. I'm not sure if the SOAR authority will get a chance to, to review and chime in on anything. Um, and hopefully, I will be strongly in favor personally of of the sewer subcommittee reviewing this potential sewer sale in, in, uh, in concert with any potential treatment changes because it is the overall sewer system. And I believe that's what the sewer subcommittee was put in place to do. Um, while also getting the sewer authority who has experience with the sewer system to chime in on p uh, potential bids. So Sounds that's good. all upcoming. Oh, I forgot one thing, the solicitor's report. I don't have anything independent other than working with Fred on getting some of these uh, projects done, like Brookstone and Stackhouse. Okay. That was easy enough. Any old business? Phil, do you mind if I just bring one thing to your attention? Real sure. Quick? So, um, the, it, at the beginning of the year, we passed the lateral ordinance that requires when a property sells that the lateral become gets inspected. We've been processing those as part of the sale. Fred and his staff reviews those. We've been turning those around typically inside a week um, where they review them, give a certificate. But the point that I'll make since we were talking about sewer lining was, and Fred, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to say we've still had in the three months that we've had this in place, probably 80 sales or so. And we've had about a dozen where there was a problem found in the lateral where it was actually leaking into the ground, which we know is part of the I and I problem that have been corrected as part of this problem from homeowners. And, you know, for me, more importantly, a new homeowner coming in there 
um, understanding that there's a problem that they could negotiate, not discovering it a few years later when it would be a big, massive expense. I think it's been a terrific program. Fred and his staff have done terrific. Every sale, nothing has been held up. They are aware when there's a problem and then they work it out and get it fixed. So it's worked very, very well. Okay, since you're on that, uh, the questions I've been getting from people, condos, and when they have to make the big inspection, uh, I'm getting people telling me it's two years, three years, or five years. I Clarify what it was. I thought it was five years when we sat in the uh, meeting with Dan. So, well, well the, 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 no, go ahead. You talk, go ahead. That's your, go ahead. Yeah. No, I believe that, that what, what we pushed that off, that the inspection is in year three that they could identify it, budget it, the inspection was in year three um, because uh, they had already done their budgets. So it was, well, actually, what would be- for, not, for, There's for, two things here though. There's the HOA, but we're also talking about, there's two parts of this. The other part of this would be if someone bought a house and then resold the house, that the certificate would be good for a period oh. before it had to be redone as well, not just with the HOAs. And I believe it was either two or three years Greg, do you remember that answer to that that part of the question? Yeah, it's two years for a new sale. So you would have two more years if someone was flipping the house, they wouldn't have to yeah. redo it. And then so, but, uh, I think it's year three for the condos. Like, like okay, that. so basically the condos would be 20, uh, 2022. Because we start in 2020. So 21, 20, 20, 2023. 2023. Okay. That's but again, but again, just so, there, just so there's no confusion if anybody's watching this, if other than the HOA still, right? If you buy a house and, and, and you live there for 20 years, there's no requirement to reinspect until you sell it again. You sell it, yeah, that I know. And people that the other thing is push this over to Dan. The commercial buildings, when, how long they have before their uh, their uh, lines have to be inspected? So, the, Fred, correct me if I misspeak here, and I might even lean on you for this one. But the commercial buildings were handling similar to the condos, correct? Exact same timeline. Exact same okay. timeline. So, that's and, where we're same, and then the other question I got from people is the shopping centers. When and how long do they have before theirs? The same as the commercial buildings. No. They are commercial buildings, I would say, right? And, and yes. The, uh, yeah. And the apartment yeah. complexes would be the same. Yes. Okay. So if everybody's watching, you're, all your questions just got answered. So. And I think the point, especially with the HOAs, Phil, as you know, is, is it would give these HOAs time to sit and, and, you know, collect necessary money. But we did make some adaptions with that where um, some of them, correct me if I'm wrong, Fred, will be done every time a property sells individually, but there'll be the collective area that'll be on that time frame. Yeah, well, the thing with the HOAs, um, like this place where I live, uh, you know, it all, all the, the building, all four go into one big pipe. So if a unit downstairs sells, uh, it's going to be inspected for the sale, but yet the other three units, basically the air pipe's already been done. So. The, the unit, the, uh, this building would be done for a uh, period. Am I correct? No, it's not exactly correct. Basically, the homeowner will, on an HOA system will go from their house to the point of the common manifold and stop there. The common manifold out to the right away of the room will be done on the HOA uh, schedule. So if a sale happens, you're only responsible from your unit to the point where it joins the manifold or the common ladder. So I'm on the second floor, so I got to get this ladder. hammered from the second floor all the way down. Yes. Well, no, it's just the outside of the house. So well, that's, what, that's what I said, the outside of the house. But that's where all that's where all four of us go into like one pipe. Yeah, it might just be five feet or two feet. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be all you'd be responsible for. All right. Any new business? Got a question. Can I ask you a question about that uh, lateral inspection? Sure. What is what is um, required if there are uh, problems as a result of the inspection? Got to get it fixed. Fred, go ahead. Yeah, you have to get it fixed. So it could yeah. be as simple as raising up 
a clean out stack. There may be a clean out that's not has been risen to the surface, but there are many places, times when there are actually cracked pipes, um, pipes that have leaks that have roots going in there. And we actually had them dig up and replace sections of that pipe. So they actually go up, dig it up from the house to the right away of the road. Yeah, I mean, cast iron rots out after so many years. Yeah. If, if a homeowner, just for the sake of argument as an example, um, is forced to do a inspection because they're selling their house, problems are found, um, they have insurance. Has there been a case where that insurance has helped them pay for the repair? I don't um, get involved in how they pay for it, so I don't honestly know. And, and I don't insurance, think the insurance it's... covers the damage, but doesn't cover the pipe. I yeah. didn't through that. And it, yeah, I think it would cover if something happened that, but not if it was like a maintenance issue of aging. Yeah. I believe with that insurance. No, when yeah, when I took out that cast iron, it was rotted out. And but being at the problem I had with the leaks, the insurance company took care of the leak, but I had to pay for the pipe. So it's still okay. Pretty Okay. Sorry. Did you say that 12 of 80 so far in, in these couple months had issues? We're, we're, we're way over 80. We're about 140. Um, okay. And it's been running right on that 15% failure rate that, that I that I quoted before. Um, we've had 15, you know, and there may actually be more than that that I'm not even aware of. Because what's happening now is we've got, got this, the, the plumbers trained. So rather than submit it and me fail it and then them have to take corrective actions, they're actually proactively doing it because they're like, you know, it's going to fail. You just want us to replace the pipe. So they're replacing the pipe. So I'm seeing new pipe in the lateral. So I pass it and don't flag it as a failure or repaired pipe. But it looks pretty clear to me. I can't say somebody didn't do a repair two years earlier. You know, you can't tell that. But there's definitely sections of different type of pipe that, that are in the indicative of a repair. Interesting. So, it's been very few fire drills that that, that that we've had. We have identified some um, leaks and, and roots in the public section, which we're documenting. And then we'll, we'll have to at some point go out and repair um, th th those the uh, public portion of the lateral. Um, so that there will be some, some of those issues that, that will come up. Um, but so far, it's been... It hasn't been the fire drill that we thought it was going to be. Now it's been slowed down a little bit by COVID, um, right. you know, but you always have a frank person that, you know, their wife wants to sell the house. They're afraid that this is going to hold everything up. So they just call 24 hours, you know, they call every two hours, you know, and, but we've been able to mitigate all of those so far. And there hasn't been anything to my knowledge that's the latest settlement yet. Related? Are you see, sorry, Phil? Um, are you seeing any trends like by neighborhoods or anything that that you're starting to see now that you've got over a hundred that you might you might Southern start part to... of Lower Mayfield, maybe? Yeah, um, I honestly haven't taken the time yet to analyze it for trends. I definitely will be doing that, um, but I, I really honestly haven't taken the time to do that. But we have them all listed out. And then we actually have them as a dot on a plan that we'll submit to the DEP as part of our Chapter 94 report. And I will be analyzing that when I submit the corrective plan update next year. Um, and we're actually going to do one in the fall. So I will be doing that, but I honestly haven't done it yet. Yeah. And I related to that, are most people using, you know, we sort of did out of convenience. You know, we, we uh, put that list of plot that very, <laughs> two, I think, what is it, two Two plumbers on the list initially. But, but I would say that 80% of the people are using the guy who was on the list. 80%. Okay. 80%. I'm guessing at 80%, but very clearly he, he's the most popular guy. And he has been very good in we've actually um, – he's actually called us. And we've actually had like a conference call kind of training for all of his guys. Mm -hmm. So they all know what we're going to fail, what we're not going to fail, what a judgment call is. So he has been very, very good. I will say that um, Zoom Sewer has also done that um, because I think one of the guys from there left and went over, went over there. But no, that um, uh, I was shocked at how high a percentage of people use that one and actually got the information from the township website. Yeah. 
Sounds like it's a, a positive right. thing that we did. So. Well, I, I think, quite honestly, realtors are the one who's spreading the word and telling them where to go. So it's really coming Perfectly. from I, mean, I don't want to, yeah. you know, I don't want to say our website's the world's greatest thing. I think realtors tell them to go to the website and find it. Well, we tell the realtors about the website, right? So there we go. Yep. So, yeah. Oh, All right. I mean, oh, there's, gotta, there's still going to be hiccups on it. Don't, let, let's not That's think okay. that, that there's not going to be hiccups. It's been less. It's been very good so far. But first six months, you're always going to have hiccups. Yeah. All right. The uh, Spruce Mill Homeowners Association awarded a, a purchase order yesterday. We're going to do a sample size of all our different types of units. And um, the, the bids were kind of all over the place in pricing, which had me a little bit concerned. Um, so we're going to, we have a couple different types of laterals and in, uh, depending on the housing situation uh, in the townhomes and in the condos. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And then that'll give us an estimate to how much it would cost. And we're going to budget it for it in the next fiscal year. So see how it goes. Good. Okay. Uh, so no new business. Um, anyone else got anything to say before we adjourn? There might be a public comment. Public comment? Oh, yes. Any public comments? No, they hung up. They thought it was another meeting. Oh, okay. Probably oh. thought it was parks and recreation. You know, you know, Kurt, every time you show up to a meeting, it's always late. We're usually out of here by uh, eight o'clock. It's not. That was, that was Fred's fault. Fred kept talking. I, I was second this time. Fred was first. We just can't Man. make the sewer sexy, you know. My, my, my clock must be wrong because it still says 8.05 on my computer. I thought I hit a home run. Now I look up and see it's 9 o'clock. It must have frozen my screen. Thank everybody for doing this and getting done. So there's nothing else to discuss. So if anyone wants to call for an adjournment, please speak up. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. I'll second, I'll second it. All in favor, I thank you all, and I bid you all good night. Thank you. Thank you.